Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Crash Course 206, Minimum Control Speed. This particular video was requested by Mr. M.I. He was the one who left a very long comment on one of my assumed temperature videos. So Mr. M, if you're watching, this video has been custom tailored as a refresh video for commercial pilots. All right, let's get started. The vast majority of pilots do understand the concept of VMC quite well. I'm just trying to add the last two or three pieces to their knowledge base to make their understanding of VMC 100%. VMC is really only a concern when you've lost an engine. It is the speed at which the rudder can counteract the asymmetric thrust which results in the yawing motion from the operating engine. So no asymmetric thrust, no asymmetric roll. The quickest way to stop a VMC roll is to idle your thrust. But there's a downside to that. You may have regained control, but now you have no thrust, so now you're crashing towards the ground. There is sort of a damned if you do, damned if you don't concept in VMC. The damned if you do would be the pilot idling the operating engine. Now he's controllably crashing towards the ground. Versus the damned if you don't, would it be the pilot not reducing thrust and VMC rolling into the ground? Neither of these scenarios are acceptable. The pilot needs to find a good middle ground between controllability and performance. Now, if the pilot finds himself in a really bad situation, low and slow, he doesn't have enough altitude to pitch over the airplane, therefore pulling power to idle is not really an option, but he's not allowed to VMC roll into the ground either. It's a constant trade-off game between adding power, reducing power, just enough to buy yourself time, but not crash into the ground. I think asymmetric thrust is the most important factor regarding VMC. Without asymmetric thrust, there's no reason for VMC to exist. A large asymmetric thrust requires a large force from the rudder to counter the yawing from the engine. So that means that less asymmetric thrust would require a lower speed at which the rudder can still counter the asymmetric yaw from the engine. A couple of examples come to mind. Number one, high altitude airports. Jet engines don't develop a lot of power at high altitude. Number two, jet engine derates. You're deliberately using less thrust for takeoff. The second most important factor of VMC are lever arms. This slide shows a normal center of gravity and lever arm. I'm going to use this as a baseline to compare the next two. This is an exaggerated Ford CG aircraft that I have drawn, but I want to get the point across that the lever arm is a lot longer than the baseline. Just by virtue of having a longer lever arm, even with the same amount of deflection, the rudder can develop more moment. This is also an exaggerated aft CG airplane. Even with the same amount of rudder deflection, due to the short lever arm, the vertical tail is not able to develop the same moment as the baseline or the Ford CG aircraft. Which would you prefer? The long arm? The baseline? Or the short arm? And which of the three do you think has the slowest VMCG speed? I'm going to wrap today's lesson up by showing you a VMC chart for a Boeing 777. This particular chart is for the 300. There are three variables on this chart that affect your VMC speed. Namely, thrust, altitude, and temperature. As the thrust increases, in other words, TO thrust, your VMC increases. As the temperature decreases, your VMC increases. And as your altitude decreases, your VMC also increases. The other important factor, lever arm, is not actually listed on this chart. But if you were to look at the 777-200 chart, it's virtually the same chart. It's just for the 777-200, which is a shorter version of the 777-300. Shorter version. Just by that, you know that this airplane has a shorter lever arm. Put simply, VMC rolls are more of a concern for the 777-200 versus its bigger clone, the 777-300. I wanted you guys to actually see the difference. 
the 123 knots in purple for the 777-300 and 133 for the 200. All of the conditions are pretty much the same except for the lever arm, and that makes up for a 10 knot difference in speed. That's all I got for today, guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, subscribe. And if you loved it, please leave a lengthy comment in the comment section below. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.